Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Brilliant Business TV conversations with leading experts in business. I am your host, Mark Stephen Pooler. We have a wonderful guest today coming on the show, David Baum. Wellness is so, so important. So I'm really looking forward to an interesting conversation today. We are streaming live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. We're also on the E360 TV network, Apple TV, Fire TV, Android TV, Roku and many more. And we're also on Business Innovators Radio Network. I just want to make an official shout out to our show sponsors, Dreamweaver Artist Ranch. So let's bring in our incredible guest, David Baum. David, welcome to Brilliance Business TV. Thank you, Mark, for inviting me. I sure it makes me laugh when people say someone's ins- brilliant, brilliant or inspiring. I'm going, who's that? Me? <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, David, what is the move for wellness? Okay. The first thing we have to understand is whatever whether you're in business or you're not, whether you're running a business or employed in a business, stress kills. End of story. And we hear all the time people breaking down and all of a sudden doing stupid things. And everyone goes, what the hell was that? Who did, why? We didn't know anything about that. So Move for Wellness has three aims. The first aim is to get people exercising and enjoying life. It raises endorphins. You can become more productive in your work-life balance. Uh, it means you, your, eye, your, eye, ears, your mind is open for better ideas. It also means we're trying to get people to stop eating a diet primarily of ultra high processed food, which again has a nasty effect on people's brains. It rewires the brains. Uh, so getting people exercising has always been the, one of the main things. And when we launched it right in the middle of the second pandemic, there we had Uncle, Uncle Joe Wicks, the country's PT instructor. Hey, go Uncle Joe. And he was doing half hour, 40 minute classes, as were so many PTs. And the problem with that is people, I mean, I'm going to go to the gym, I train regularly. I got bored because I wasn't getting the interaction, the feedback from other people. Even laughter is quite useful. So we came up with the conclusion that what we need to do is create something that was more inclusive to everyone, whatever their physical abilities, from the fully able body to those who are not so able body. Um, The idea was one exercise for two minutes, 21 seconds a day. That's all people had to do. But if you could do it once, try it two, three, four times. And every day it varies. So it lasts uh, two minutes. So we do five days a week. And all of a sudden we're finding people from around the world taking part. And what pleased me more than anything, one of our early adopters, for want of a better word, was a lady called Nancy Ezekiel from just outside Austin. Now, Nancy is an amazing lady. She's about 58, I think she said. She has 40 different physical complaints, but she refuses to let them define who she is. And she said, I love what you're doing. Can I take part and join in? I went, yeah. I said, would you do me a kindness? And she said, what's that? I said, would you please try and adapt every exercise so that we can, anyone could take part? She said, that'd be my great pleasure. And she literally, every day, would post something. She will find an alternative for somebody who's not physically able. And so that's making a difference. But also the other side we're trying to do is raise lots of money because we want to open something called Oasis of Calm. Now, again, in business, in retail especially, people get stressed. I know my wife used to be a manager of uh, Holland and Barrett, and she would get so angry with her line manager, with P. Well, if she could have found a place where she'd go for free for an hour, a sensory room for adults where you can just calm down, let off steam, hit a punch bag. It would have saved my arms a lot of pain where she hit me because she was frustrated with what was going on. So that's the other aim we're trying to do. Excellent work, David. And 
definitely doing fitness does give you those endorphins mm. and makes you feel better. And I agree with the foods that you eat. It's so, so important for the way that you feel. And what to what make amazed me, uh, Mark, there's two, there two brothers, Xander and Chris, on the BBC, BBC Doctors. And Chris was doing, Van Tuchel, I think his name is, was doing an experiment where for a month he lived the fast food diet. And they did all the experiments with all the measurements beforehand, uh, weight. They even did a brain scan to see what the reaction to this diet was. After a month, his BMI went through the roof. His All his measurements went up. And they discovered his brain had been remapped. All the synapses has changed. New synapses were created that has never been gone back. So how much damage? I know... The manufacturers go, it's all 100% beef, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's not the meat that's the problem. It's the chemicals that are being used in the sauces and in the breads in everyday life. But yes. it's destroying people. It brings me on nicely to my next question. Now, you have mentioned about not so able-bodied. Hmm. Can anyone join, including the not so able bodied? And also, is there a particular age range as well, David? Uh, age range can be from whatever age you want to, but I think for the younger the younger generation, that those that are sort of preteen, they run around. They don't even think about. It, they just do what they can do. They enjoy exercise. My PT Becky Burke has two amazing kids: one of uh, seven, one of five, and they are fully active. Uh, our granddaughter is, is coming to four in November. She is fully active. She runs around. So when you're at that age, that you're enjoying life. So realistic, it would be someone who's, say, in their teens who wants to start getting, maybe wants to try and get a bit fitter. They don't get the old-fashioned uh, Charles Atlas advert at the back of their comics these days where, you know, in five days I'm going to make you a man. Oh, sorry, that was the Rocky Horror Show. Uh, but you used to get these adverts from Charles Atlas. You don't get that anymore. And was it Bulwark? Because that was the other thing. Uh, but at any age upwards, so my mother-in-law is 86 now. She can't so, do yeah. some of the stuff, but we, when she wants to take part, we, we sit in the chair and do some chair, do some chair stamping. So stamp your feet on the ground, get things moving. We want it to be open to everyone. And the beauty of it is we have people working behind the scenes who can advise. So if we get someone says who's got say, like Nancy, for instance, who is 75%, 80% of the time in her wheelchair, and she needed that advice, we can introduce her to the right person who will help her find the right level of exercise for her. Not every exercise is ideal. It's great that you're helping so many different types of people, even oh. the not-so-able-bodied, who need this more than anyone, really, to keep them active and keep them upbeat as well, David, and also... I mean, it's, it's, Exercise is one, as we said before, is one of the best ways of raising the endorphins, the happy, I think. Yes. And with it, they did that survey years ago in Korea or China where every day before the South Korea, every day before the work started, they would do half an hour of calisthenics. It was compulsory. And remember the West laughing, oh, oh they just, whatever. But they had the greatest economic, economic growth of anyone because – they were upbeat, they were energised, they were ready for the day. And so there's an argument, should be said, for business. If you want to get your staff fully functioning and on board and wide awake, do 20 minutes of exercise before the day starts, even if it's just walking around the desk doing some squats, just doing something. Don't get sort of sweaty and hot and sweaty so you're not going to work, but enough to get the blood raising. And is there any kind of special equipment needed, David? Oh, let me see. Oh, yes. How about a bottle? You could do that. Or something. You can't really see, but arm curls with a bottle. Yes. What piece of equipment is that? Every ex... No, you don't really need. There was a PT that I follow on social media. And one of the questions he said was, was asked, if you were starting now, what would you do? What would you avoid? And he said, body weight. Body weight is the best exercise. I mean, someone starts now, go for a walk, get outside. It's autumn, it's fresh, it's crisp, it's dry, it's brilliant. Clear your head. Trees are marvellous. If you really want to be out and clear your head, don't put your headphones in. Just go for a walk. Just allow yes. the sounds of nature. 
remember, oh God, right in the heart of the lockdown, I woke up at about six o'clock. It was dark outside. And I thought, what the hell am I doing what I'm doing for? And then my wife's next to me, she's snoring. I'm not being derogatory about her snoring. Then I heard our son, younger son who lives with us in his room snoring. And then our dog was snoring. So I thought, I'll go get the papers. It's dark. But as I step out, I can hear birds tweeting. Twitter yes. Tweeting. And it was daylight was breaking. The most beautiful sunrise was coming. I went to get the papers and I came back. And all of a sudden I could see buds were on the tree. And I thought, this is why I do what I do, because there's so much energy in life. Yes. But if you want to be miserable, you can be miserable. If you want to find a happy life, it's not millions in the bank, but unfortunately under this current situation where the economic climate where it is, it does help to have a bit of money available to, so you don't have to panic about money and you don't have to panic about food. But so many people are panicking needlessly. We had this with the shortage of toilet rolls at the height of the right side of the pandemic. Why, no one knows why toilet rolls, but someone said we need toilet rolls. Instead of saying, okay, what, how can we get around it? They panic. So if we can stop people panicking, and it goes not just across a normal life, but in your working life. We have a pandemic, unfortunately, coming uh, an economic pandemic ha happening now where businesses are going to fold. But a lot of it is uh, false belief. And if they wake up in the morning and go, oh, God, the business is in real trouble. We're going to have a real problem. It may not happen. But in their mind, it's going to happen. And once you start that path, you can't get off it. Yes, it spirals. Beliefs are really, really important, oh. David. And I also love listening to the birds singing. Now, David, on your picture behind you, I can see you in a tutu. And I've yeah. also seen photos of you in you a like tutu. That? One like this. Tell us the story behind that. Why the tutu? Okay, why am I known as the man of the tutu? I'm a member of a networking organisation. I started running, and it's like anything. No one sees you when you're running. They just see people running, unless you are a long, leggy, leggy blonde brunette with a beautiful figure. No one actually sees who you are. And I was challenged once, what would it take for me to wear a tutu if I ran? And I said, 50 quid. He says, done. They gave me 50 quid for moving on. And all of a sudden, I noticed people were noticing me. OK, next day I went out for a run. Nothing. Nobody saw. And I thought, you know what? This is stupid. This is a perfect way of drawing attention. I become um, it's become memorable. And I've been out running now and I've had I've gone past. I can't run at the moment. I've got some uh, problems with my shin, shin splints type thing. But I will be back running hopefully next week. Uh, but I've had old ladies in um, in bus. Oh, well done, young man. Keep going. And other cars hooting every time they see me and thumbs going up. No one's calling rude names. They're just. And what's hilarious is someone says to me, why are you wearing a tutu? And I can go, I thank you so much for asking. Now, let me explain what this is all about. It is a talking point. Everyone, everyone in life and business, you need to have a gimmick. I think yes. it was in Gypsy where they had the three strippers talking to Natalie Wood's character. Gypsy Rowley, and they said, you've got to have a gimmick. So one played the trumpet, one did this, one had light up. It's what makes you stand out. Yes, and I hear you. It's it. So I've got a multitude. So we do things on a Friday night called Frivolous Friday, for instance. So this week, we haven't done it for two weeks out of respect for the Queen. We're coming back with a banger called the Splosh or something from Scotland. And we're going to be, I'll be wearing a tartan tutu if it comes in. It makes people laugh. Laughter yes. is the other way of raising endorphins. So, the man in the world, too, too, it has become my brand. I actually went to, I was doing the Great South Run last year, get down there, and there's a woman wearing an orange tutu. And I'll catch her afterwards. I said, Why are you wearing a tutu? She said, It's a great way of people catching my eyes. She said, What made you do that? She said, I saw some old guy on Facebook wearing one. I thought, What a great idea. <laughs> I didn't say it was me. And I had supposed to be doing the, um, uh, the big half marathon uh, a couple of weeks ago. But unfortunately, I had this injury, so I couldn't take part. And the friend of mine who did take part, she said, there were quite a few people wearing tutus. I've never seen so many in the park. And, and, and she's a runner. She said, it's the first time I've seen that many tutus anywhere. You've what have the hell have you started? 
You've set a trend. David, we're just going to go to a commercial break. Please stay where you are. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for part one of Brilliant Business TV, conversations with leading experts in business. Join us after the commercial break. Hello, this is uh, Stephen Buckner, and uh, just wanted to tell you uh, I support the uh, Dreamweaver project. Um, it's a great product project where you know artists such as myself will be able to come together and uh, basically collaborate and to have a retreat to feel accepted and welcome. And that's something that artists here and around the world could always benefit from. So. I just want to say, please support the Dream Reliever Project. Um, I think it's for a great cause, and uh, I salute all the independent artists out there and artists that are signed as well, and uh, have a wonderful day. Welcome back to Breeding. Business TV conversations with leading experts. We're in conversation with David Bourne from Move for Wellness. Welcome back, David. Thank you. So I know you raise money. What are you doing with the money raised, David? I love questions like this. It's great, great thing. It's the one the one I have great pleasure in always answering. At the moment, we are supporting. The best way to talk on the talking cafes. These are organizations where people can go for free and they can get help. And these are things like the PTSD, menopause cafes, drug rehab, LGBTQ, because people forget the families of those suffering need help. People, I get calls regularly from people saying on the emails, Can you help my, my partner? Most of them PTSD, most of them are ex squaddies. And I have a, a lovely relationship with a number of uh, healers who will look after these people very quickly and help them move forward with their life but as i said the other side of it is to we want to open these oasis of calm and it's never been done uh and we the aim is we will be opening them but we need to raise a lot more money we've raised so far about twenty thousand out of well, congratulations that's amazing i'm really proud of that and the other things i've set in stone that it always worries me when you hear people say, we want to raise this and we want to raise that. And we want to do this, we want to do that. I have set in stone that we will never spend more than 40% of whatever we raise. 60% of whatever you raise will always be used to help others. So it means we really have, and that's why we set a, such a high target, because we know if we've raised 365 to open these, a lot of 60% of that will have already gone to support other people. So rewarding that you're helping people, David. And mm. what have you done to raise awareness? Oh, I've done stupid little things like taking part in runs. Now, I'm a 64-year-old man. And if I can go out and run a 10K or run a half marathon, I was supposed to be doing the marathon, but as I said, I ha- that's going to put back to April now. Uh, that's one thing. We've done events at gyms uh, where we do an endurance run, but we also have business events. So we're at the business networking show in Birmingham on the 6th of October, for instance. If anyone wants to attend, it's free to attend. All you've got to do is register. And it's going to be a great event. There's about 100 exhibitors there. And I will I will be on a bike for the six hours of the show, pedaling away. We will also have I invite people to make a donation, and they can do some exercise on the stand or get some chocolate. Uh, we have another one, the business resources show in um May and we're doing the COTS, which is community and occupational therapy show in care and occupational therapy in Exeter later in the year. It's all about doing those sort of things, getting out of it. We are in the process of planning some events with supermarkets where again it will involve me on a bike because hey, why not? Uh where we're hopefully the, we're waiting for a confirmation of one of the major chains that they will allow us to bring the bike in in the foyer and on a Saturday, blast out music and get on the bike and ride. And it's love watching people's faces when they see the time has gone like, you've done how far? You've four hours? How? And it's great, but it gets people talking. 
Yes, you're very, we very have to be innovative. We sell merchandise. Why? Because it's a way of raising money. So, someone wants to buy a tutu, we've got tutus. If you want to buy a mug, great. We've got some water bottles coming online. Uh, we've got not trying to do too much of normal merchandise because why would someone want to buy a polo shirt? They can buy a vest top. Uh, we've got banda. It's it's the normal stuff. We don't we, we haven't got around to bring and buy sales yet or uh, tea se- or cake sales, but it may happen. I'm open to ideas. You keep yourself very very busy, David. Now, David, what is Frivolous Friday? <laughs> Frivolous Friday is our attempt to make people laugh. Every Friday, my wife and I choose a song. The rule is it has to, if I play it and her feet tap, we're, pl- we're using it. It doesn't matter whether it's from the 50s, the 60s, 70s, or even up to now. The older problem we have with the newer stuff is the moment we put it out, at some point, some bright spark at Universal or Sony will decide if we just infringed their copyright. And the trouble is you can't actually do anything about it because I've spoken to the PRS, the Performing Rights Society, and you can't have a license to play music on Apple, on iPhones, or across the thing, because Sony, Universal, etc., will not grant those licenses. So you, you you put it up and you get it taken down. And it makes us laugh. So as I said, fri- this Friday, it's a song, I believe it's called The Splosh. I've got it written down somewhere. And it's a version of Una Paloma Blanca that's very, very popular in Scotland. And we'll, we have what are called the Tilly Dolls, which are basically mannequin heads on broomsticks, where one has a red pink wig, the other has a blue wig, and my wife and I just don't dance. We never call it dancing. We just muck around in the garden, throwing these. I have fun. We just have fun for whatever length of the record. And if we don't do it, I get messages. Why are you blowing frivolous? Why is frivolous coming? And it's, it's a total nonsense. We started it during lockdown. We were trying to do a few more, but no one's anyone will see it on a Friday. It's right. And I've got people in America who get me a message, are you doing frivolous this week? And they got all upset last week, last few weeks when we weren't doing it. But I thought it was inappropriate. I decided within about 10 seconds of death being announced that it would be inappropriate for us to do anything like that until after the funeral. Yes, I hear you. You're doing great, great things in the world, Dave. No, thank you. I know you're on Instagram at Move for Wellness 21. Yeah. Just share with our audience who should reach out to you, who should connect with you. Okay, there's two types of people. One is obviously businesses because we, we have digital sponsors as well now. This is where we somebody will have – that we've got something like 100,000 growing audience of our daily exercise, databases of over 10,000, where they their details can reach them. So if a business is out there that wishes to be associated – with what we're doing for mental health and good wellness, please contact me. There is a very serious matter. We might, I might be doing stupid things, but what we're trying to do is very serious. Yes. But also, if any of your viewers, and we know there's hundreds of thousands of viewers out there, because it's a great program, and if they're not watching, why not? Uh, wants to, to take part and see what we're doing? Take part. If you want to come along and meet me, as I said, we're up, I'm at TBNS in, in Birmingham on the sixth of October. I'll be the sweaty one on the bike, but come along. It's free. Uh, if you want to have an idea of what exercises, you, you're, if you're a PT or involved with fitness, now we have a lot of people in fitness. If you want to come up with an idea of what a week's theme, because when we do the, the the exercises, not just throw it together, we decide a theme for the week. So this week, for instance, it's a BOSU week. So anything that can be done on a BOSU, but it also can be done without a BOSU. So if you've got an idea of an exercise regime, contact us. If you've got an idea of what's a, a stunt that David can do in a tutu, that doesn't involve physically damaging me. I'm 64, by the way, so I don't need to be physically damaged. So I don't do things like bungee jumping or jumping out of an aeroplane or roll down hills because at 64 you bounce. You don't bounce as easy. So that, that's out the window. Uh, but t- make a suggestion. If you're putting on a, if you want me to bring the t- Tilly Dolls, me and, my, me and Mel and the others bring the Tilly Dolls to your office and have a prance around in your office or do some exercise, because that's one of the things we were going to do before COVID. We actually had a number of offices lined up with this. Come down and do some exercise in the office. Uh, then let me know. The, I yeah, would because other people said to us, can we have an app? Yeah. I would encourage everyone, especially if you're looking to improve your wellness, go to at Move for Wellness 21 on Instagram. That's at Move for Wellness 21. 
David, thank you so, so much for being my guest today. I've thoroughly yes. enjoyed having a conversation with you. Mark, thank you. And if anyone's watching who is in business and you want to have an enjoyable 25, 30 minutes, message Mark because it's a great flat platform. I appreciate your kind words, David. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for Brilliant Business TV. We have been in conversation with David Baum from Move for Wellness. Until next time, bye for now. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.